as Oscar Wilde put it, divided by a common language. We are honored to be the friend of the United States of America. We are happy to have a special relationship with the United States of America. We just don't want to have the kind of special relationship that Miss Lewinsky had with President Clinton. We want something more honorable, more equal than that. The second lie is that we somehow hate Jews, that we are somehow anti-Semitic. Well, apart from the fact that the Palestinians themselves are Semitic, the idea that someone like me, who has spent his entire life from the age of 13 until now, fighting against racism in all its forms, could possibly hate someone, not because of what they do, but because of who they are, is another absurdity, but a particularly virulent and effective one, at least until now here in the United States. I discover from the Internet this morning that the so-called Anti-Defamation League has written to the Attorney General of the United States drawing attention to my campaign in this country. Well, for an anti-defamation league, they do a fine line in defamation of others, I must say. <laughs> Let me make this abundantly clear as I do every time I speak. This has nothing to do with hating Judaism or hating Jews. This has nothing to do with religion. This is about a group of European settlers who stole somebody else's land and who refused to give it back, who scattered the people whose land it was, who now number in their millions into misery, endless misery, and we demand their legal and moral right to return to their country be implemented. And we'll go on fighting for that until the last breath of our lives. <laughs> Neither is it the case that all Jews are Zionists. There are many Jews in Israel, in America, and around the world who stand with us for justice for Palestine and we honor and salute them in the first rank of those who can feel the pain that we've just been watching on that video. Neither is it true that you have to be Jewish to be a Zionist, most Zionists are not Jews. Most are crazed fundamentalist Christians here in the United States who support Israel as a means of getting to Armageddon as quickly as possible, but who generally are not very keen on Jews. Anyone who thinks George W. Bush, like Jews, has never visited his golf club. This whole tragedy was written in the building in which I sit. Almost a century ago, when the foreign minister of Great Britain which was then the heart of an empire such as the world had never seen. One-fifth of all the land on the earth was under the Union flag, the Union Jack of the British Empire. One quarter of all humanity was ruled from this building in London 
in which I sit. Britain had an empire so vast that upon it the sun never set. Though as my Irish grandfather used to say, that's because God would never trust the British in the dark. <laughs> Balfour, on behalf of one people, promised a second people the land of a third people. Even by the standards of imperial audacity, it was a remarkable thing to do, to give away land which was not yours to a small group of people who incidentally were, to a man, atheists. They were not claiming any biblical title to this land then. Absurd though that would be, as if God were an estate agent ready to kick out people who had lived for millennia on a piece of land so that others who had lived in Europe for millennia could return to it at their expense. Each of the Zionist leaders to whom Balfour promised this land was an atheist who was ready, by the way, to make their state, their European colonial state, anywhere and was discussing, negotiating to do just that in the Seychelles, in Uganda, in Patagonia, anywhere would do because it was a European colonial project just exactly like that which had occurred in South Africa or Rhodesia, Zimbabwe or many other places. Mr. Balfour made this promise to the Jews in his famous Balfour Declaration, even though the Jews were never consulted about whether they wanted this promise or not, and the vast majority of them at that time did not. Not because he liked Jews, but because he hated them. Balfour was an anti-Semite. He wanted the Jews to leave England to go anywhere so that he would not have to look upon their faces again. A pattern which is repeated in this picture over and over again. It's not we who are the anti-Semites. It's not we who have reduced this great Jewish people, the people of Einstein and Epstein, to a people represented by, at least according to their own claim, Netanyahu and Lieberman. Zionism is the enemy of the Jewish people as well as the enemy of the Palestinian people. That's the truth. This promise given by the British Empire was redeemed in the course of the next decades and reached its apex in the catastrophe of 1948, 61 years ago. This catastrophe which has wiped Palestine from the map and scattered many of you and millions of others to the four corners of the earth. But that was not the end of it. Since that catastrophe, disaster after disaster has been visited upon the Palestinian people because they refused to accept the Nakba. They refused to go into the museum of X nations. They refused to be reduced to a museum exhibit where their clothes and their culture could be seen behind glass as a civilization, as a people which had given up 
the will or the ability to live. And it's because of that resistance, which has never died, that so many have spent so much in blood and treasure to try to destroy this effervescent determination of the Palestinian people to return to their country and to return their country to the map.